My lovely, lovely imps. Today, I wanted to talk about uh, repression, the closet, and why you should live openly and honestly as yourself uh, if you can. And I think a lot more people can than think that they can. Uh, we just did a review of a really fantastic and very timely and scary movie called I Saw the TV Glow, and I highly recommend you go check out that movie and my review of it. Um, and I felt that it would be appropriate for us to have a broader conversation about this topic um, because, uh, frankly, I think that not enough people talk about this specifically. It is a difficult topic, no doubt. Um, but if we just leave it there to hang, uh, no one's life is going to get any better. Uh, and, uh, so I wanted to talk about this. So first off, let's, let's make a little bit of a delineation between the concept of the closet and the concept of repression. Um, obviously from my perspective, you know, I am coming from a perspective of, you know, the life of a non-binary trans woman um, and uh, who is in a partner, who is in a relationship with uh, partners all across the gender, you know, spectrum. Um, but uh, uh, I think that this, you know, my goal will be to try and apply these concepts uh, in ways that are useful to uh, everyone. Hi. Okay. Oh, so um, yeah. the concept of the closet, uh, being in the closet uh, can sometimes refer uh, to repression. You know, some people say, oh boy, that one is so deep in the closet. The old, jo the old joke that some people have heard is like, he's so deep in the closet that he's in Narnia. You know, that's like uh, an old joke uh, about, uh, you know, people who are basically repressing. But being in the closet doesn't always mean uh, that you're repressing. Um, some people are in the closet uh, because they are in a point at a point in their life where they would be in danger. You know, for example, if you happen to live in a country where uh, being trans or being gay is illegal and punishable by law, um, that could require you to live some of your life in the closet, or maybe all of your life in the closet. Um, it's, uh, it's a different concept than the concept of repression, but there are some overlaps. And I want to be clear that um, I have an incredible amount of sympathy um, and empathy for people uh, who are in the closet uh, with regard to um, their public life. Um, I was uh, forcibly outed to my family, to a large portion of my family. Um, and it was an incredibly painful experience. I had the autonomy over um, talking about issues that had to do with me, my identity and my body taken away from me um, in a way that was explicitly uh, done to try and shame me and, uh, and put me in a disadvantaged position. Uh, so I have a lot of sympathy uh, and empathy, like I said, for, for people who have to deal with uh, a hostile environment and therefore, you know, live their lives with some level of secrecy. It's a painful position to be in, and sometimes you don't have much of a choice. Um, the closet is a, is a uh, uh, it's a complicated, you know, experience and a complicated concept. Um, and sometimes it is difficult to tell, you know, when is safe to be out of the closet and when it's not. Um, in our current moment, uh, it is very hard to know whether you are going to experience uh, negative repercussions for being publicly out uh, as a gay person or as a trans person or as a non-binary person or any combination therein. Um, and it can be maddening, in fact, because, uh, you can't always prove it. You know, for example, uh, trans 
women have uh, uh, some of the worst employment prospects of any demographic in the United States of America. Trans women are paid less, they get hired less, they're passed over per, for promotions more frequently. Um, but proving uh, that it's tied to your identity is damn near impossible most of the time as an average person. Sure, broad studies and investigation can sometimes reveal that information, but as an individual, you can almost never know why every time you submit your, uh, your application, you get an interview, and then the second you go to your interview, all of a sudden, no interest, despite being very qualified for the position. An experience I've had. You never know if it's like, am I doing something wrong? Was there something wrong that I did in the interview? Or am I experiencing discrimination? Um, so it can drive you wild. And for some people, they have no choice but to choose uh, some level of being in the closet in order for their to, to be safe. So I wanted to be clear and discuss the concept of the closet and the reasons why uh, people are in the closet um, and why people make that decision, you know, as compassionately as possible before we start talking about the concept of repression. Um, so that being done, let's talk about repression. The concept of repression refers to uh, intentionally uh, out, out of out of basically out of your own actions intentionally taking actions that hide or suppress parts of you that you know are true and real um, this could be a gay person refusing to have relationships with other gay people because they don't want to confront the fact that they're gay or because they feel guilt over being gay this is incredibly common among um, religious people who are also gay um, uh, many, many religious people who are gay uh, feel uh, religious guilt over the fact that they are gay and therefore feel like they must uh, refuse to act on this sort of thing um, or refuse to participate in that sort of thing. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, it can also refer, um, repression can also look like uh, uh, a trans person who uh, really, really, really wants to, uh, uh, to transition but refuses to transition um, because, well, you know, people might judge me or, um, I, might, uh, or, or I might be scared of, of whether or not I would be able to live my life the same way. Um, it can also uh, look like a trans person who feels an incredible urge to, to live their life a different way uh, as the opposite gender or otherwise uh, and refuses to do so um, because they think that it will just go away or they think that uh, no good will come of it or they think that, oh, well, you know, maybe I won't look the way that I want to and therefore I shouldn't do it. Um, these are various types of of what we would call repression. It is someone taking something that they know about themselves, perhaps rationalizing it, and then suppressing it intentionally. Um, and I will say that I think there is some forms of repression that are unintentional, but um, like that people just don't really know and they're just acting out of it, but that's a lot more complicated. And uh, if you don't really know at all, if you don't have any awareness that you are, like I would consider that more like not having the language to describe yourself as opposed to explicit repression. There's another type of repression, um, which is sometimes referred to as assimilationism. Um, and this type of repression um, is when someone uh, basically wants, they, they, they control parts of themselves um, because they don't, uh, they're afraid of seeming like an abnormal type of person. So imagine a gay person that might really, really like, um, 
being particularly like uh, like bouncy and high energy and flamboyant, but doesn't do that and deliberately changes the way that they act um, because they're afraid of looking like a stereotype. You know, they don't they don't want to go, oh, like, don't you know, I don't want to I don't want people to think I'm like a stereotypical gay. So I'm not going to do that, even though that might be how they really like to be. They might feel good that way. Um, it can be uh, it can also take the form of, uh, you know, like a trans person who might really, really, really love the idea of uh, being a. A slutty puppy girl on the internet, but refuses to engage in that for fear of uh, of of doing damage to the trans movement or who might judge other people for that same type of behavior. Oh God, don't act like that. They're gonna you know they're gonna they're gonna say you're a stereotype or whatever. You know, there's some examples of repression and various forms of repression. I wanted to talk about these and get these out there and sort of make them, you know, distill them into some various forms that we see. And I want to talk about why they're bad and why people should be bold enough and brave enough. And I'm saying this actively, that you should do your best to live as yourself, as truly as possible. Repression does not, it's not a healthy way of living, okay? It is not a comfortable way to live. Repression requires devoting an enormous amount of your emotional and mental energy towards policing your own behaviors, often on behalf of people you don't know. It's not even just for the people that you do know. Repression requires predicting constantly what other people that you don't know are, uh, uh, are going to think and then adjusting your actions from their from their original genuine position uh, to whatever you think would make those people uh, happier. What's worse about this is that not only is that act in and of itself incredibly exhausting and you know t attacks on your own energy, not only does it mean that you're not you know living the way that you want to live on behalf of somebody else. But it also means that slowly over time, you start training your brain to think like those people. And it can get even worse when you're incorrectly making assumptions about what other people will think, which is frequent. When people who are, um, who, when, when you live in a world where there is some very loud and hateful people who might have a platform, say you go on Twitter and you see deranged transphobes or deranged homophobes screaming horrible things about gay people and horrible things about trans people um, onto the in, uh, you know into the internet and you encounter that it can give the idea that more people think that way than actually do and if you try to act as those people tell you to, or as you imagine those people are telling you to do, you can start to digest and understand the world through a lens that might not even accurately represent what the people around you, uh, let alone the average person, um, actually thinks. And you can eventually start to uh, uh, deeply internalize those thought processes to the point that even at, if the culture was to change, even if uh, people became more accepting, you might harbor some deep level of hatred based on what you thought you had to internalize from some hateful freak on the internet. It's a bad thing to do, okay? Repressive, a, re a repressive uh, uh, thought process like that is so toxic and it is so unbelievably suffocating and it genuinely will twist your mind. On the internet, a lot of people like to refer to this as brain worms. You know, we hear that word a lot right now. Obviously, in a couple of years, it'll probably be a different word. But brain worms is what a lot of people use to refer to this type of stuff. It's like when people spend a lot of time on certain websites on the internet. 4chan is one that a lot of people like to bring up. You know, that people get the 4chan brain worms, you know, whatever they might be, um, thinking a certain way about stuff. 
But in reality, what it is, it is, it is a form of internalizing repression to the point that you don't even realize that it's become a part of you, that you are not even in opposition to it anymore, that you've, you've brought it into yourself and are replicating it out into the world, often onto other people, but always onto yourself. Um, and when you have to spend all your time with someone who hates you inside your own head, that can be, become understandably incredibly destructive and miserable, right? <clears throat> there are all kinds of forms of repression that, that people engage in. There are all kinds of uh, uh, cliches that lead to types of repression. Uh, some examples I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, if you transition too old, it's over for you. Um, uh, if you uh, if you're gay, you'll never have a family and people won't love you. Uh, if you're trans, you'll never have a family and people won't love you. Um, if you look a certain way, your transition won't be successful. These are these are uh, repressive uh, uh, thought terminating cliches that popularize themselves through the internet, um, but don't actually really have any grounding in reality um and yet they lead to people making horrible decisions about themselves um and hurting themselves in the long run uh because they've come to internalize these me these messages without actually being able to analyze them for their for their factuality and of course some of them are completely impossible to analyze for their factuality how can you ever know uh, who, how many people transition at what age and how they end up, you don't know that. You, nobody knows that. It's so hard to find that information. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Fortnite brings up the cancel tilt type stuff. Yes, that type of stuff where it's like uh, people fixating on like bone structure in very weird ways. Um, and... Uh, in the end, of course, uh, people transition at all kinds of ages and look amazing and feel happy. Uh, trans people do and do currently and, and often find fulfilling uh, uh, social relationships, family or otherwise. Sometimes it's a family of choice that is just as fulfilling as, uh, you know, a family... Uh, you know, a, 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 a familial or like, what's the word that I'm looking for here? A, a like genetic family. Um, same thing for gay people. Gay people uh, and trans people both find themselves in rich, wonderful, fulfilling and supportive social environments all the time. I know so many trans people whose, uh, whose social lives are the most beautiful and rich and supportive of any people that I've ever met. Um, most of these thought terminating cliches are designed to, imp to, to convince people to repress. And of course, the purpose of repression is one of social control. In the end, that is what it ultimately is about. Repression exists as a phenomenon among trans and gay and queer people broadly because there are forces at play in the world, in a, pol in a broad political world, that wish to control the b lives and bodies of all people. And they are especially harsh on queer people who don't fall into the worldview uh, or don't fall into the, uh, the plan that these ideologies have for the world. A world that demands um, uh, and centers the, uh, a, a patriarchal structured atomic, uh, or sorry, nuclear family, atomic family, same idea basically, but uh, a, a ideology that puts a patriarchal figure at the center of a nuclear family for the purposes of producing as many children as possible, for the purposes of fueling a, a industrial machine and a military machine, uh, that type of ideology wants to suppress any type of life that doesn't take that structure. And so these ideas are propagated 
often on complete misinformation, on complete falsehoods, in the name of trying to force people into living a very specific life that is convenient to the goals of those at the very top of that type of structure. The patriarchs, uh, 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 the, the, the richest, whitest men that you can imagine who want to be the daddies of the world and they want to be able to have plenty of other people to go to war for them, plenty of other people to labor away in factories and call centers and warehouses for them. But that's not the only way to live. That's not the only world that exists. Repression serves that type of worldview. It is the weapon of a worldview that wants to get rid of anybody who doesn't contribute to filling the warehouses with offspring. That is not to say that having children is bad or having a family is bad. It's trying to, it's trying to show that that's not the only way to live. And a world that, that encourages you constantly to repress anything that looks different than that is a world that is trying to uh, create a specific goal. I am here today to tell you that I think that you should live as yourself. It is one of the most rewarding, freeing, and wonderful things that you can ever do. We only get one life, okay? And even if you're somebody who believes in an afterlife, even if you're somebody who believes in reincarnation, the fact still remains that we only live this iteration one time, and we should make the best of it. We should not spend our lives living falsely, living repressed. There are parts of us that yearn to be free. Things that for often for reasons we can't even fully explain are just who we are. And we should be able to live up to those. I believe this to a very strong degree. You guys know I go so far as to, as to do extreme body mods. That's how far I believe that we should live as our true selves to the best of our ability. I will go so far as to go out of my way to get my tongue split just so that I can look the way I wanted to look in my heart and mind. And I've, I've never regretted it even once. Not even a drop. I've only benefited from that. It's so much stronger for something like your sexuality or your gender identity. Your bodily autonomy is, is, is so important for these things. And this is not to say that there aren't times in which you have to weigh your, your decisions with caution. Um, again, if you live in the closet because uh, you live in an area where it is actively dangerous, um, then I understand that completely. But also, I want to urge you to be to analyze carefully how many options are actually there for you. And remember that much of the, uh, of the oppression against queer people is done by terror, not by anything, um, not by anything uh, physically done. It is not, it is not that uh, if you're in your home as yourself, that there's a, you know, somebody is secretly watching you is going to beat you up. It's that there is an oppressive environment that encourages people to uh, be scared around every corner. But the reality is that gay and trans people have thrived in more oppressive environments and in worse times of history than any that currently exist. So we can do it. It is possible. And we should find ways to do it together. We should encourage one another constantly. We should help one another constantly. Help one another escape. Help one another liberate. And for those of us who can step forward and who can be as out as possible, we should. We should be out, we should be loud, and we should be proud about it. There are so many people out there who need to see other people like themselves or even people somewhat adjacent to themselves. 
in, and they will see us and we will grow stronger. People always underestimate just how many of us there are, just how many gay people, just how many trans people, just how many non-binary people there are, just how many queer people generally there are. We always underestimate and we always have. And part of that is because there are so many people who don't say it openly for one reason or another. Part of the assault against queer people in the United States right now is trying to make people too scared to be forward about it, too scared to say it openly, which further makes people feel more isolated. We're stronger together. We're stronger. And not only that, we're happier. A lot of people spend so much of their time afraid of what may happen to them if they decide to live honestly as themselves, if they decide to come out and have a boyfriend, come out and have a girlfriend, come out and uh, be openly non-binary, come out and transition. So many people spend so much time fearing what might happen that they don't realize the suffering that they're going through right now. It's like a devil you know type situation, except the devil that you know is tormenting you and driving you crazy and ruining your life. And I want to tell people unequivocally that it's worth it. It's worth it to live a life fully, even if there's pain, even if there's fear. The life that you live fully as yourself will feel better. It feels incredible. It's like sh having shackles off of you. You will be stronger just for that. I've seen it with my own eyes in my own life. I've seen it in the lives of others. I've told this story on stream before, but I'm gonna tell it again now. There was a point in my life where I had gotten hormones and I had been outed forcibly to my family. I had been disowned by my father. All of these were horrible and painful things. And I had gotten hormones. And I was so miserable and in pain from all of the shit that other people were doing to me, from the, the, the harassment and the pain and the abuse from members of my family that I convinced myself that if I continued taking my hormones, that I was never going to live a happy life. That I was not fully out to everyone that I knew. Only my family knew. My friends didn't know. I wasn't living publicly as a woman. Only a few of my friends knew. I still had to go to work, uh, at, you know, under my dead name. I still had to go to work under my old identity. And I convinced myself that if I continued, I would never be happy again. And I threw my hormones away. I deliberately threw them in a place I could never get them back. And it was the worst decision of my life. It plunged me into a chapter that was darker than any that I've ever been in. There has never been a moment of my life where I was more miserable than when I had convinced myself that uh, my only path forward was to cave to the people who had been fucking bludgeoning me. I, I do not know, how, like, they, my family would have had to become so even worse in order to reach the level of suffering that I gave to myself by repressing, by detransitioning. Now, I don't, I don't blame myself for making that decision in that moment. I wasn't rational. I was suffering at the hands of family members who had a lot of power over me and who had used that power to hurt me. But I know, looking back, that that decision that I made, that flawed decision, led me to the most suffering period of my entire life where I was the least happiest, the least fulfilled. I can't even begin to, to summon up the right words to to, to explain the level of suffocation and pain that I was in. It was horrible. 
I felt dead. I didn't feel like I was even present. I barely remember anything from that period of my life, except for the pain. Almost nothing. I have almost no memories from that period of my life. That's how horrible I was. That's how, like, how horrible it was. It's worth it, even if it's painful, to live honestly as yourself. And the truth is, it is rarely as painful as you think it's going to be. Our enemies, people who hate us, who hate everything that doesn't fit their demented worldview, totally unrealistic worldview, those people rely on fear. They rely on terror to keep people separate, to keep people away from living as their full selves. And we shouldn't let them have that. For those people who have no choice, for people who live in extremely oppressive environments where even being out at all puts your life in immediate danger, let's find a way to save those people. Let's find a way to try and help those people. But for everybody else, for everyone else who's beyond that, appreciate what freedoms you have, appreciate what leeway you have, and, and grab the world, okay? B breathe, breathe the opportunity into yourself and fulfill it, okay? For real. I, I, want, I want people to work hard to save the people who can't, but a lot of people who can don't, and that is such a tragedy. There are so goddamn many people right now who have the potential to be living a life that is unimaginably better than they're currently living. And they don't because they've convinced themselves they can't, because they've told themselves, I'm too old, I'm too whatever, I'm gonna be lonely, when none of those things are actually true. It's such a tragedy. And I don't want any more tragedy in this world. I want to see all of, of my fellow queer people thriving to the maximum amount. I want to see you living your, your puppy dog, snail girl, dragon girl, eldritch entity, boy, uh, 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 unidentifiable gender lives. I want to see you with your boyfriends, your girlfriends, your they friends, your, your Therians. I want to see you all thriving to the maximal degree possible. I know that life is better when you're living fully as yourself, when your soul can breathe. And I want you all to be able to taste that too. People deserve to feel that way. People deserve liberation. The world is more beautiful when more people are living that way. Repression is a trick. It is a part of a regime of terror that is imposed selectively. And the closet is an unfortunate necessity for some people. But for most people, it's not a necessity. And I want people to consider the fact that whether or not they actually need to live in the same closet they've been living in. Or if they'd be stronger outside of it. I know I am. I, the life that I lived before, there were so many things that I lost from before that I now realize I never needed at all. You have to understand, when I came out, the stuff that I thought was important, like, keep in mind, this all happened 10 years before I started streaming. Before I had one of the most successful ventures of my entire, the, the most successful venture of my entire life. I never could have even imagined what was in the future for me. And the things that I was afraid of losing uh, were not that great to begin with. They were just what I knew. But it was, the cost was unimaginable. The cost was 
a, a, a psychic a, a psychic tearing uh, of of unimaginable uh, proportion. I am more powerful than I was when I was afraid, when I was hiding. Even though I had to go through some stuff, and even though being out is on the surface uh, more dangerous than not being out. Or at least I should say being out as trans is more dangerous than being cis. But I was in more danger being in the closet because I could not reach my full potential. And I am more capable of defending myself, of protecting myself, of, of fighting for myself out of the closet and out of the repression sphere than I, than I ever could have been in there. So even though on a, on a, if you go, oh, well, compared to a cis person, you know, or compared to a cis person, you know, you, you know, people can be horrible to you. They can say horrible things and whatever, but I can also deal with it better. If I had never stepped out of that, all of this stuff that happened, if I had never stepped out of the closet, if I had never transitioned, I never would have met any of my partners that I know now. My, my pack, my critters, who we all take care of each other, we've taken care of each other through sickness, through health, through, through fear, we would have never found each other. If all of us hadn't been able to live as ourselves, we would have never connected with one another. And that would have put us in even more danger than we could have imagined. The stuff that we've helped each other through is, is I would have never been able to even make it. And also, there are some things I could have never predicted. I had family members who did not accept me when I first came out, who I now have healthy relationships with because we worked through it and they understood the error of their ways and be, they grew as people themselves and we have a relationship now. That's, I did not expect that that would ever happen. I thought that I was only going to lose, but I now have a stronger relationship with some of my family members as a result of being able to be real. So many, when you are in the oppression sphere, when you're in the repression, sorry, repression sphere and oppression sphere, but when you're in the repression sphere and when you're in the closet, people are engaging with an incomplete version of you. They don't know you. They can't know you. And so even the relationships that you do cherish can't go that deep. Silver Tarot 25 says, I'm cis hetero. I consider myself an ally and I just want to say thank you, Demon Mama, for sharing your experiences. I've learned so much from you. Thank you for that really kind comment. It means a lot to me. And you're welcome. I, I, I just want to see the world become a better place. I want people who've been through uh, things like me and things adjacent to my experience to live more fully and to, to, to be, become free of fear. Of, a, of that type of suffocating fear. And also, I wanna see people's minds be unlocked. Do you know how much energy it takes from you to repress? Repression is the biggest energy drain you can ever imagine. I could not create the beautiful things that I have created if I was still repressing. I could not have lived my life to the fullest. I could not, I've, the things that I've done since I came out are I can't, sometimes I, I am like, oh my God, I didn't even think about this. Like I could have never done the cross country journey with my critters that I did if I was still spending all my time worrying about repression. It sucks the life out of you and you, you will be amazed what you can accomplish when you're no longer spending all your days uh, policing yourself all the time, beating yourself up all the time. Anyway. I think I've said everything that I need to say on this particular subject at this particular juncture. So I'm going to wrap this off by saying, please live as yourself, liberate yourself, even if it's hard, even if the path is full of unknowns, even if the path is scary, fight for it, fight for it like your life depends on it because it does. You only have one life, even if it means you have to flee to another country, even if it means you have to learn a language. To go, to, to go somewhere else, even if it means you have to, to go way out of your comfort zone, do it because you will thank yourself forever 
The you that is waiting to be unleashed will thank you forever. Please. And also, I want to remind you of the one rule of my community, the one order, the edict issued from the throne of hell. Rule number one, do not fucking die. The reason why I don't want you to die is because if you keep going, you keep fighting, I know that we can fight for our, for our liberation and that we can achieve it. So do not fucking die. Thank you all for watching.